Uh, before I start this video, I'd just like to thank Ivan Livkovsky for uh, donating $5 a month to me on Patreon. I really appreciate it and thank you uh, very much. If you haven't checked out my Patreon page already, there's a link in the description. Thank you again. Hello and welcome to the Boring Chemistry channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the preparation of salicylic acid from aspirin tablets. Salicylic acid is an important molecule. It is typically used for its medicinal properties in its reduction of the symptoms of aches and pains, much like aspirin. It is also a key ingredient in many skincare products for the treatments of calluses and warts, etc. The reason why I am so interested in salicylic acid is that it can be decarboxylated with relative ease to produce phenol, an extremely useful yet highly toxic precursor. The method for producing a pure salicylic acid product consists of two key stages, separation of the aspirin from the tablets and then a base hydrolysis followed by protonation to yield the desired product. In the first step, I will be using a solvent in which aspirin is particularly soluble in. Isopropanol can be used, although I recommend using acetone. In this demonstration, I will use some methanol I had left over from a previous video. Methanol is toxic, thus I would avoid using it if you have the choice. For this experiment, you will need a solvent, aspirin tablets, sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid, reflux setup, a heat source, filter papers, a buchner funnel, a tray, and distilled or deionized water. The 18 aspirin tablets were roughly crushed and dissolved in the solvent of choice. This separates the insoluble chemicals such as starch as well as talc and the soluble pure aspirin in the tablets. You should make sure you use enough solvent to completely dissolve all the aspirin in the tablets. When the tablets were completely dissolved, I left the solution to rest so that a layer of insoluble compound settles at the bottom of the beaker. I then proceeded to vacuum filter the solution and poured it into a tray and left it overnight for the solvent to evaporate away. I returned to find that all of the solvent had evaporated and pure aspirin crystals remained on the surface of the tray, which I then crushed into a powder using a pestle and mortar. If you really wanted to, you could recrystallize the aspirin, but I decided not to. In the end, I was left with a powder of mass approximately equal to 7.5 grams. This gave me roughly a 94% yield as I initially started with 8 grams of pure aspirin in the tablets. I think this loss can be attributed to the fact that I dropped some of the crushed aspirin onto the work surface when attempting to pour it into the beaker. We have now reached the second stage of the synthesis. Next we perform a base hydrolysis of the ester link in the aspirin molecule, forming disodium salicylate and sodium acetate, as well as water. First, I calculated that for the 7.5 grams of aspirin I had, I would need 5 grams of sodium hydroxide to completely hydrolyze the aspirin molecule. This was calculated using the stoichiometric equation. I then prepared a 2.5 molar solution of sodium hydroxide by dissolving 5 grams of pure sodium hydroxide in 50 ml of deionized water. I then added the aspirin powder I produced in the first stage to a 500 ml boiling flask along with sodium hydroxide solution. I then heated the mixture under reflux for about 10 minutes. The solution turns dark orange. Unfortunately, the stir on my hot plate stopped working during the reflux, which is why you should never buy cheap Chinese lab equipment. I then let the glassware cool and used about 30ml of 5 molar HCl to completely acidify the solution. This will form your salicylic acid and your acetic acid. Salicylic acid is practically insoluble in water, so it precipitates out of the solution immediately as it's formed. To separate the precipitate from the solution, vacuum filter the mixture, taking care to wash the precipitate with distilled water to remove the excess HCl and acetic acid from the precipitate. Once your precipitate is separated, leave it to dry. This gives you a crude salicylic acid product. To achieve a higher purity, you can recrystallize the product and dry again for use as a precursor in other reactions. In this case, I did not. I then weighed the product and found it to have a mass of 4.51 grams. This works out at a yield of 79%. This isn't something to shout about, but I believe if I was working with greater amounts of aspirin, the yield could be increased significantly. 
and that's how you prepare salicylic acid from aspirin tablets.